if you're working with your dog that's sound phobic, it's, it's got a fear of a sound. It could be any sound. Sit. could be thunder. It could be uh, gunshots. It could be fireworks. It could be vacuum cleaners, the weed eater, anything like that. You slowly step the dog up and desensitize the dog. So in this case, we, we have the vacuum cleaner. And now we're going to incorporate the weed eater. And the exercise is simple. I just want Riley to sit. Riley, sit. And I don't really care if she, you know, well, I do care, but I, that's why I'm doing this. I don't really care if she's uncomfortable at first because I know that if I send the correct message, she will be compliant. Now, I do have her on an e-collar. We're probably not going to use it, but if we do, I use a vibrate mode with her. She has a bug bothering her. So it's real simple. I just need her to sit and stay right by the vacuum cleaner. Now, before, when I turn it on, I put the leash in my hand, right? No, I didn't say move, Riley. Riley, here. Sit. Sit. Good. Sit. As soon as I turn it on, she got this look in her face, like this smile. She knows we're working. That's that's what's important. If you can't, don't train a dog with food. Train a dog with praise, play, and other things. I'm gonna turn the. I'm gonna start up the weed eater too. Sit. No, sit. cleaner and the weed eater and if you notice right when I started up the weed eater she got barn sour what did I do I put her right back down where she's supposed to be that's important if your dog freaks out on something you're trying to get the dog not to be sound phobic right you put the dog back where it was it goes back in the position that it was before it freaked out that's telling the dog you're sending the message don't freak out dog you know, trust me. That's what it's about. You need the dog to trust you and see you as a leader. If you let the dog, oh, the dog's afraid, and then the dog just runs off, and then you just let the dog do whatever, huge mistake. You're telling the dog, yes, you should be afraid. What I'm telling Riley is don't be afraid of the weed eater. Don't be afraid of the vacuum cleaner. I said, sit. That's it. That's all I said was sit. That's all I need you to do. Trust me, dog. In other words, if I'm using the weed eater, I'm not afraid of it. Riley, no. No. Sit. She's coming over to say hello. Sit. But I told her to sit. But if I'm using the weed eater, 
or, or the vacuum cleaner. I'm not afraid of it. You shouldn't be afraid either. The same is true of rain, anything like that, anything that your dog is afraid of. Get the dog used to it by stepping it up in increments. If the dog's afraid of rain, you don't take it out in the downpour. You take it out when it, in a light shower. Do you understand? And anything like, like thunder is difficult to deal with because you have the barometric pressure that drops, which affects the dog. So you can only really work on the dog with thunder when, it, when there's going to be thunder. Now you can use other sounds that are real intense, like a gunshot and stuff, to kind of desensitize the dog, get the dog used to seeing loud sounds like that. It's like nothing that's like, do you understand? But there is not going to be any substitute for thunder because you have the barometric pressure to deal with too. And to be perfectly honest, I see a lot of females that have issues with thunder, and I think that it goes back to getting the, the puppies back into the den. So they sense the barometric pressure. Also, if, there's, if you have a dog that's thunderphobic and you're working with the dog, you might want to lightly mist it with water. Lightly mist it with water because it gets like this static charge on its fur. So get rid of that and, and that might help. Um, other than that, the basic rule of thumb is that the dog needs to be compliant. And if you want to get the dog better, if you want to get the dog healthy, which she's acting totally normal, you, you have to tell the dog no. If you're working with a purely positive dog trainer that's not purely positive for your dog, they're selling you garbage. They're selling you absolute garbage. Imagine you're never going to say no to the dog. You, you should say no. And if you're going to use a dog trainer, use a dog trainer that knows how to articulate a negative to the dog and teach you to do the same thing. O'Reilly's going to be fine. I don't know if we had more time, honestly, I'd, I'd, I'd keep working on this. Seriously, this is something that like you, I, I like to just get it out of the way and work with it the whole time during a board and train, but she's just, she's just chilling with us right now. So, um, has this impact, have I influenced her? Yes, I believe so. I believe she's better. Now she goes home and her mom's using the vacu vacuum cleaner. Her mom can use these same methods and continue conditioning her not to be afraid of these sounds. Your dog shouldn't be afraid of anything, you know? Especially anything that's like natural, like rain. You know, these machines, they do make a growling sound. You know, sort of like a growling sound. So, but it doesn't matter. It, it's not going to hurt you. Same thing's true of skateboards. That is why a lot of dogs respond to skateboards because the wheels make a growling sound and it's, it's a moving object. But they shouldn't respond to that either. That's the point. Riley, you did good. Good girl. Riley, here. You're a good dog, dude. Heel, that's right. Good girl. Sit. Very nice. It's my Riley. It's a good girl. Sit. She's so pretty. She did good. She's done great. I can fire a shotgun around her now. No problems. No problems. You know, I mean, honestly, if, if I was, I might take her this afternoon and we might shoot the shotgun, but I would, I would um, have some kind of element of control with her. Like I might, I might have her on an e-collar. Like we didn't even use, have to use the e-collar, but it's on her. She knows that, you know, that it's there, that it's on. That's the whole deal about e-collars is you keep putting them on the dog, even when the dog is fully trained. You know, like Riley, if they started using an e-collar again, they'd just have to have it on the dog and maybe use it every now and then. If they used it once a day just to make her sit quicker, she'd be more confident. She would. So that's my recommendation to Riley's mom and dad. E-collars are, are safe, effective tools. And she's so low set on the stimulation that a human can't even feel it. So if, if you're dialing it up, it just sort of makes it like the dog more excited. So you just want to indicate that the dog is doing a negative. You can also use the vibration mode. If it's conditioned improperly, the dog sees it as like, oh yeah, wait a minute, I'm doing something wrong. And that's usually what I use with Riley is vibration. But I use low stimulation to sit. 
But anyway, so you having problems with your sound phobic dog? Work with the dog. They don't get better unless you work with them. It's a fact. And it's well, it's well worth it. It's well worth it not seeing your dog respond to, you know, something that it's afraid of. You're a good girl. Riley, here. That's a good girl. She's so good.